Hi everybody, my name is Susie and I'm a third year math student at the University of Warwick. Today I wanted to talk about the Warwick Undergraduate Maths Handbook because it's an amazing resource and basically everyone I know doesn't use it unless like you're already at the university. So for prospective students it's a really useful tool to kind of get a sense of what maths is available at Warwick, what you'll be studying, um, what kind of directions your university career can lead you in. Um, but also for people who are already at Warwick, it's got so much handy information which I think people don't utilise enough. Um, so today I just wanted to kind of run over some of that information. The website is split up into five sections. You have your first year, second year, third year and then fourth year sections and then your exam information and core module averages. The exam information and core module averages section basically does what it says on the tin. Um, it kind of provides you with details about assessment and also for the core modules, what people have gotten in past years, what the average grade was. Um, but that's something which is very handy because that section also includes a lot of past papers and the past paper solutions, and also some feedback for some of those. Um, so if you're looking at a module, a really good way to get a sense of what the module is going to be like is looking at the exam paper, because you can quite quickly get a sense of, you know, is this very information heavy? Is this very like, you have to develop your own proofs during the exam, that kind of thing. So it's worth checking out, but chances are you probably won't be interacting with it much until you get to third term and then you're doing these exams and then you're doing all the past papers, um, at which point this, this module will be this module, this website will be your lifeblood essentially. So on the page for first year modules, I wanted to pick out two things which are different from the second, third and fourth year. You have your advice for choosing a module and you have your advice for first years. Advice for first years is obviously just something that I recommend that all first years read, but it is also quite useful for prospective students if you because a lot of it is talking about things like what a levels you've taken how warwick is going to bring you up to speed so that's something useful coming in knowing you know how will i be able to get from my information to where warwick needs me to be for first year um in terms of the advice on choosing modules there is a lot of information there which is very useful especially if you don't want to just do pure maths all the time so there's information about unusual options, which are those that you have to get special permission for, basically because, because they're unusual. Um, I myself have taken an unusual option, so I took a creative writing module in my third year and I had to go through the process for that. So I wish I'd seen this you know, sooner because I think I missed this in first year and it's got some really, really helpful advice for how to go through that process. It also... Um, just describes a bit more about like if you want to develop like a kind of sideline for if you want to do maybe maths and statistics but you're not on a maths and statistics degree it will give you kind of like it th there's advice there on how to kind of do that sort of thing additionally um it reminds you to kind of look forwards when you're choosing your modules maths seems to be quite lax from my experience in terms of there being formal prerequisites before you take a module but at the same time, there is lots of stuff which is, if it's assumed knowledge or useful background, then it's really, really useful that, you know, if in third year you know you want to take this module and it requires you to have taken this module in second year, then when you're in second year you want to be taking that module so you can take the module in third year. Um, so yeah, just kind of stuff like that, which is making sure that when you are choosing your modules, you make the best decision you can. Because obviously one of the great things about Warwick uh, and Warwick Maths in particular, is that at the moment the course is based on you choosing your modules. So in first year, you know, you're only choosing a few because there are quite a few core modules, but by the time it gets to third year, 100% of your choices are optional. So it's really great in terms of that personalisation of the course. So onto the information that is available on all of the first, second, third year and fourth year module pages. First of all, obviously there will be a list of all the modules that are available for that year. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory, but that will come with it some extra information. First of all, it will tell you which list a module is on. Um, list A modules are normally higher in mathematical content and the same as List C. For, I think, bachelor students, there are fewer requirements on that, but I know I'm on the uh, Masters, I'm on the Integrated Masters, so there are requirements for me that I have to take a certain number of modules from list A and C essentially to make sure that I'm I'm doing enough maths in my maths degree. Um, 
as well as that there'll be how many cats a module is worth so a cat i think i've explained in a, a previous video but it's basically a measure of how much work a module should be taking you so one cat is meant to be 10 hours of work over the entire year whether that's from independent study going to lectures or preparing for an exam um, a lot of the modules that I take in third year are 15 cats, so 150 hours over the year, and then in first year, I think they've recently changed it, so most modules are 10 cats, I want to say, but I know that there has been uh, some development in, in how the university handles these things recently, so, you know, do, do your own research, work out how much work a module is going to be. Um, most modules are the same number of cats in a year but it is very worth looking at how much work is expected from you because so for example in my first year i took some physics modules which were worth six cats um so obviously i knew i knew when i was doing those this is i'm meant to be spending less time on this this is meant to be easier um and how many cats a module is worth will also be used to kind of weight how much it's worth at the end of the year in terms of your grade so if you take a module that's worth a lot of cats, then your grade is going to be really dependent on that module. Also on these web pages are going to be your list of core modules, which is just very self-explanatory. These are the modules that you're going to need to take. Um, but also there'll be information about um, the other courses which are kind of aligned to maths and what the requirements for each of those courses will be. So very obviously you'll have your maths bachelors and your masters in mathematics will have slightly different requirements. But also on the on the um, handbook webpage, there's a lot of information about your kind of maths adjacent courses. So lots of the maths and statistics, ma maths with business, maths and physics, stuff like that. Um, that will just tell you what you need to be taking, what modules are required, stuff like that. Finally, the other information is, apart from the maths modules, you will also have lists of modules from other departments, which are essentially recommended, I suppose, for math students. Um, any of those modules that are listed on the handbook normally don't count as unusual options. So that's, very, that, that, that's how I've taken things like computer science modules, physics modules, and statistics modules. Um, but there are also other departments, I think, Philosophy and business are two departments that have very close links with the maths department So normally the maths department is like completely happy for you to take those modules from those lists Which is very fun as previously mentioned if you kind of want to dip your toe into another uh, Degree or another subject without actually, you know taking that for your entire degree And finally probably one of the most useful resources is the actual web page for each module itself as a prospective student or as a student who isn't currently studying that module, you probably won't have the access to the Moodle, which is where a lot of the key information will be for actually taking the module. But if you're looking at looking forwards and you're looking at modules you want to take, then you're going to get more than enough information just on the handbook webpage. Here's an example. The web pages for most modules are going to look very similar, but obviously with different information inside them. First of all, the information you're going to get is the lecturer, and then you can also get a link to, you know, what that lecturer is actually up to. So uh, if you want to contact them, if you want to see what other modules they're teaching and what they're publishing, you know, that's right available for you here. Secondly, you're going to get which term a module is in. So most modules will either be in term one or term two, not both, but some of the bigger modules will run across, across two terms. You also got the list it's on, you already know that. And then the commitment, which is essentially how many lectures, how much time you're going to spend doing this. Um, sometimes this will, they will tell you if this is expected to be online or in person, but as things have been moving much more back in person, it, it seems to be left out a lot more. The assessment is another big one. So um, a lot of maths modules do have these kind of fortnightly assignments or weekly assignments or whatever, which are worth relatively less of the module compared to you know a big exam at the end of the year which is how the majority of maths is assessed but that's something to look at where it might be that there are um 100 coursework modules and that might really closely align with what you want to do so working that out now working out if it's a coursework module will be so useful for you later on so this is the part of the web page which kind of talks about where you've come from and where you're going for more prerequisites um this one has none. Some of them do have formal prerequisites, but as I said, math seems to be quite flexible with that. For example, um, there was a statistics module, well, okay, 
<laughs> I was talking about maths, I'm now on to stats. But uh, there was a statistics module which I hadn't taken the formal prerequisite. I just taught it to myself over the summer. I didn't do an exam and they let me take the module, so that was fine. Um, assumed knowledge is something which, if you if you don't have this coming in, you're going to struggle, essentially. Um, as it says, this is stuff that they will, they're not going to teach this to you because they assume you already know it. So if you don't know it, that's when things start to get a little bit more dicey. Um, in contrast, useful background. <clears throat> you don't have to have taken it, but it's going to make your understanding that much more easier. Synergies is just basically um, the other modules which go really well with this module. So learning combinatorics and combinatorial optimization at the same time obviously makes sense and that's nice if maybe you know you want to do one module but you're not sure what else you want to do with that the synergies part will just kind of give you some ideas for where to go then looking forwards these um modules are either assumed knowledge or useful background and you can see the taking combinatorics opens up quite a few things for you later so very very exciting finally the the meat of this uh section is the content so this is so useful. I would recommend never ever taking a module until you have read this section because a lot of these words are not going to mean anything to you at the time, but if you just try and get the basic, most simple understanding of what you're going to be learning over the course, then it means that you'll actually understand what module you're signing up for. Because I have definitely fallen into the trap of not doing that and just taking a module based off of its name because I assumed that I knew what I was going to be taught. I didn't, and then I didn't enjoy it. So I would make sure you know what you're signing up for. Um, this is also another thing where if you're a prospective student, you can then, if you know that you absolutely desperately want to learn about this one thing that maybe you've done in your own like outside reading, then coming onto the webpage and looking at your first year modules, or maybe second, third year, depending on how advanced you are, um, and making sure that there are modules that do match with the kind of maths you want to be studying, this is going to be where you do that because here you can see what you're going to be learning so if you know that you want to go into a certain field you can check it out here finally the books so these are not normally the actual like books that you will be asked to read for the module but this is normally good background or useful external reading um if you maybe are looking at your summer ahead and you're thinking oh i've got nothing to do maybe you know you want to do one of these modules and maybe now is a good time to to read one of these books but even outside of that um it's just useful i think that you have a reading list before you've because this is before you've signed up to the module like anyone on the internet can access this web page so if you know that at some point in your life you want to take this module then you know what books you can read to start getting a, a jump start on that so i hope this has been a useful very quick tour of what the maths undergraduate handbook has to offer um, and I hope that you guys will take this information as it is, as a kind of springboard for you to start your own research and your own kind of understanding of what math you're going to be doing at work or what maths you'd hope to do at work if you're not actually here yet. I hope you all have a good summer. Thank you for watching and I'll see you later. Bye.